Hello there, this is Joran Barres from the Flowable team, and today with me I've got uh, Philip Pirisafov. Hello, Philip. Hello, everyone. And uh, as you can see, Philip is also uh, controlling my screen, so we've got uh, two pointers on the screen that we both can use to show stuff uh, together. So let's see how this goes. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to continue the conversation that we did, I think, uh, around three weeks ago, something like that. Uh, part one of Flowable and Serverless. And if you haven't watched it yet, but you have found this video, I'm sure that the part one is very close to it. So um, I think it's quite important to get the contents or see that, that part first, because we're just going to continue uh, where we stop there. Um, now, in part one, Philip and me, we talked about many things. Uh, we talked about what is serverless, uh, explained the whole kind of concepts, what it is, what it isn't, when it makes sense and stuff like that. Uh, and we talked about the idea of building a process of function so that you would call a serverless function and it would start a process for you. That was really the goal. There were some challenges with that. Namely, there was the uh, database connection, for example. There was the uh, the call boot up time. Uh, but we had solutions for all of these that we showed in, uh, in part one. And also we uh, implemented and, and demoed quite a bit in that uh, video. We talked about uh, Flowable and Spring Clouds. We also showed how you can deploy this uh, project on AWS, on Amazon's cloud environments, on the Lambda uh, environment more specifically. We also showed Flowable with Micronaut, and we also showed how you build a serverless process of function with Micronaut and then compile it to a native image with Graal VM. So there was a lot, uh, to, there was a lot that we talked about in that uh, movie. And, and I think, uh, yeah, I think we were quite pleased or enthusiastic about uh, the result that we got. Um, for example, one of the things uh, by the end of the of the uh, presentation is that we were running Micronaut with uh, JDK 11 open 9 sp uh, version specifically. And um, the time we got there, the, the cold boot up time, now this is literally a, a flowable server, uh, well, a server with flowable with an HTTP REST endpoint, and that starts a full process in 355 uh, milliseconds. And uh, the memory that was used both when we were using Spring Cloud and Micronaut was around seven megabytes, which was awesome. Um, and at the end, we also build a native image using Graal VM, uh, which we uh, then then just run. And the startup time time there was really incredible. We we had like this the same environment basically, the process of function with Flowable in 14 milliseconds. And yeah, we also showed uh, live that it actually uh, worked. And um, yeah, then we we put that video online, and actually yeah, many people were. Uh, coming to us with questions or just saying, you know, that that was, uh, was cool stuff that we demoed. Um, but also quite a bit of people that, that asked us, you know, uh, you know, we showed Spring Cloud, Micronaut, Micronaut and Graal. Now, if you want to do the same thing with, with Spring Boots or Spring and um, and Flowable now, and, and Graal more specifically, what, what should we do? And, and that's where, uh, yeah, uh, we, we started going to, into, yeah, looking into it, right, Philip? Exactly. Yeah. So we started looking into how this can be done natively with Graal and Spring. And we came to the Spring Food project, which is actually an incubator project from the Spring Boot from the Spring team, and it allows it's an incubator project for new features and which is related to explicit configuration. So um, basically, functional API using the functional API from the Spring framework instead of annotations. So there is it's runtime efficient, so it doesn't do any. Yeah reflections and things like this. So there's no uh, class path scanning. Yeah. So if you want to read more about that, uh, you know, use the, the GitHub link uh, slash Spring Project, Spring Foo, and you know, the things that we will show today, they're all discussed there, all documented there. Um, yeah, it's a pretty interesting uh, thing, right, Philip? Yeah, exactly. It's Yeah, we got some good numbers as well, which we will show after. Oh, you're, you're already uh, getting a spoiler here. <laughs> yeah, small spoiler, yeah. And an interesting thing for Spring Foo is that it actually started uh, for Kotlin, so it was initially done for with the Spring uh, functional uh, functional bin registration and was done only in Kotlin, so that's where the Kofu name comes. But after, yeah, I think they had a big uh, request from the community for Java. I think a lot of people use Java as well. And that's that's why now you have Java DSL as well, and there is a distinction between Jafu, so it's Java functional, and then Kofu Kotlin function. And of course, it has out of the box Grail native image support. Yeah, and they were quite the same. I mean, we tried both. We tried both Kofu and Jafu, and and yeah, from a programming point of view, they are quite similar. I mean, uh, you know, some things they look better in Kofu, but some things just look better in in Java, probably because we're used to more programming in Java ourselves. 
Um, but yeah, the cool thing is you can choose, right? And the really cool thing is that it comes uh, out of the box with support for, for Grail and uh, building native images with Grail. Um, but yeah, more about that uh, later. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's just jump into the code. So uh, everything that we showed today as in the previous presentation uh, the, is just on GitHub uh, in the, the Flowable project uh, repository. There is a Flowable serverless project and everything that we showed today and everything we showed uh, in the last video is on there. So let's just jump into how the Spring Foo project looks like. Um, so basically what we have here, um, I mean, if you know Spring Boot or you, you watch the Spring Cloud uh, thing we did, it's actually very similar, right? I mean, you, you register beans. The only difference is that now you don't really rely on, on annotations or, or scanning. You just say, these are my beans, and these are the beans that my application has. And what you then do is you boot up your own server. You just say, this is a server, this is a port, and I've got here a handler listening to a get request, a HTTP REST get request slash process. And if, you, if the server gets that in, I want to start this process. But you see that. It's a very um, functional style of writing applications. If you compare that, uh, compare that to the, uh, yeah, to what we had before. Let me just uh, show you um, uh, quickly. For example, uh, all right, this was the, uh, the the Spring Boot function. This was even before uh, Spring Cloud. Yes. Um, yeah. So basically, what is here? You got an annotation saying it's a Spring Boot configuration. You register yourself as a, as a function. And it scans, you know, the beans and stuff like that. Oh, this is, you know, already quite an optimized example, actually, because we we did the minimal kind of thing that was needed to make this happen. So this was already quite performant, and there was not much uh, scanning going on. But still, there was a bit of, you know, um, Spring Boots stuff happening behind the scenes with with Spring Foo. There is actually nothing hidden. Everything you see is is what you get, and nothing more. And that's really why, you know, the, the, I think the goal of Spring Foo is is getting that kind of uh, low memory footprint, fast boot up time um, yeah, on top of Spring Boot, which is uh, quite cool. Uh, no runtime um, annotation scanning and things like that. You define your own web application, your beans and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and just so to, uh, yeah, I mean, just from a Maven point of view, dependency point of view, the only thing that yeah. kind of changed was that we added the Spring Foo, the Jafu uh, kind of flavor of the things to, to our project, but that was pretty much it. Our handler was just there. Uh, you know, just a start process where we call a process service. Didn't really need to do that, but just, you know, makes things a bit more clear to talk about. And this is literally the same code as we had before. All our examples before they started the process in the in the same way. Um, now, one thing you might have seen is that we kind of cleaned up uh, the initialization logic. Uh, before there was like a big static uh, code block at the top of the classes. That's gone now. We kind of, you know, cleaned that up a bit, which makes things more easier to read. But in the end, what we're still using yeah. is the same mechanisms. We still are using those um, ahead of time compilation things that we talked about in the past, where we generate the BPMN model from uh, from XML, basically, uh, beforehand. And we include that um, for, for the fast boot up time. Um, I'm, and we can run this. I'm just, uh, just going to show this. It did work. Yep. It's uh, not demoware. Here we go. Right, here we go. So just boots up. I can now, you know, I'll show that later with uh, when we go continue. But basically, you can now fire off REST requests, and that's it. It works. We got a full service that that starts a process. And the process we're using, by the way, is the same process we used before with uh, with that example that goes to the uh, online REST API from Star Wars, and we get some information back and stuff like that. So there's nothing changed there. Um, so this is this is uh, Spring uh, Foo. Um, to have a similar kind of, of comparison that we did before, I we run this on the same machine, uh, which is an iMac, uh, you know, not, not the latest and greatest, uh, but not uh, just the, the machine I use for development. Uh, the call boot up time was around one second, which is quite similar to our Spring Cloud results. Um, and we, we, we didn't spend that much time looking into it, right, Philip? Uh, but uh, I think yeah. the reason why they're similar is because we kind of already optimized the Spring Cloud to the maximum, we we, we used every th trick we could find online, and we you know we we I think that's why. But I think that if your application grows, then Spring Foo will definitely uh, avoid. Yeah, most we'll yeah. yeah, exactly. We didn't really do that yet, but that would be an interesting thing uh, to see. Yeah. But that's also I, I what, think but, that yeah. yeah, I think that's also what people online say, right? Is that that really changes the boot up time because you do everything uh, manually. There is no scanning, whatever going on. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that the small speed up that we see here. Yeah. It's 
It's just exactly. that there is no uh, no automatic no auto configuration being scanned automatically and things like this. So. Exactly. But yeah, functionally, there wasn't really a difference between um, our Spring Cloud uh, kind of example and what we have here, because in the end, they do the same thing. But the cool thing is, of course, is that uh, Spring Foo comes out of the box with scripts and support for building native images using the Graal VM. Now, we talked quite a bit about Graal and what it is uh, in part one, so let's not do that. Um, suffice to say is that it's a JDK from Oracle. And it comes with a command called native image that you can use to basically generate a binary that contains the bare minimum needed for your application. And it's it's an, it's natively compiled for your machine or for the let's say the architecture of your machine. And uh, there's no JVM that needs to you know boot up and then read class. Everything's pre-compiled, uh, so to say. Pre-compiled, yeah, ahead of time compilation. So it exactly. also exactly. does some optimizations, not just compilation. It's also just does opti some optimizations as well. And um, so the script that we used is basically a script that comes um, with with uh, an example that we, we uh, got from uh, the Spring Foo repository. Uh, let me just uh, build. Here we go. Um, yeah. In the end, I mean, I mean, Philip, you you built this example. Maybe you can talk a bit about it. Yeah. So it, in the end, it's more or less adding. Basically, so this is mo most of the things we got from the Springful examples, where it adds all the required uh, Graal uh, files for the for Spring Boot, for Sp uh, for Spring Framework, for Natty, and so on. And then we also have this as before. We have some custom reflect JSONs. Which... Yeah, I'll, I'll open that. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the one we also needed to have before which uh, are the uh, methods, yeah. basically the classes that we want to expose that, uh, because otherwise uh, Graal will uh, basically remove them if, if they can't, if, for example, if we use them in an expression or in a script in, in a process, yeah. they will be removed. So we need to say, you know, take this uh, fully, you know, without optimization. And, and that's the, the work that uh, the Spring Foo team has done. Well, let me just open up, for example, this one. Oh, no, that's, uh, that's the other one. No, this one is for ours, but this yeah. is, yeah, this is from the Spring Foo team, basically, which... Exactly. Configures the Spring Boot. Uh, this is for the Spring Boot dependencies. Yeah, and then we also and get the same thing for Netty and Log4j apparently. Yeah, right. for Netty, and we have Log4j as well, and we also have Spring Framework. So all the needed. Uh, exactly. Now, uh, from if there, if yeah. you would execute this uh, this script, uh, this particular script, you you would see that this actually takes already quite a long time, and I, you know we put here some numbers. So you can see that um, on my my own machine that compiling this native image with uh, Graal already takes you know, almost three minutes. And, and in the end, there's not much code in there, right? I mean, we only got like one main and a few handlers and that's it. So three yeah. minutes to compile that. Uh, I mean, that's also what we said in the previous uh, video is that, you know, it's, it's, it's still early days for Graal. I mean, this is very cool technology and it it's changes a lot and very fast. It's really awesome. But uh, yeah, it's still early days here. But uh, yeah, the future looks bright, I would say. Exactly, yeah. and you see, like analysis takes like more than a minute, and yeah. Now, if you run this, uh, of course, that's what everybody wants to know. Now, if you run this, then um, yeah, the speed is the boot. The call boot up time is actually really, really fast. So here on on the same uh, test machine as before, uh, we could boot up the whole the whole uh, server with the REST API, with the flow of process engine, with the process deployed already in 13 milliseconds. And just to show you that this is not a lie, I mean, there's gonna be a bit slower here because um, of course uh, I'm now recording and I'm sharing my screen through Slack with Philip. So this is not going to be the same numbers as before. Yeah, yeah allow this. Um, so basically already booted up. And if I now curl it, here we go. And you see from the logging that this is, uh, you know, it's yeah, really it's... executing something and it's, it's doing, yeah, real, Real stuff. So you know, uh, same results as before, which is is quite, um, quite awesome. Thirteen milliseconds to boot up. Um, yeah, for, I first thought it's like opening a file. Like it's yes, like you're exactly. doing a last one on a file. <laughs> exactly. And not uh, an actual application. Yeah. yeah, and if you think about it, it's. Uh, I mean, in the end, uh, if you would do this, even if if you do this like one minute, less than one minute, uh, second, sorry, one second is already very fast. And if you then compare it to the thirteen milliseconds, and uh, that's also kind of like. Uh, our conclusion here is that um, basically we did everything we showed in the previous video, and we now did it with Spring Foo and Graal, and it's equally fast as as a thing we found uh, as the results that we had in the last video, and that's 
really, really awesome. Um, it also shows, again, the same conclusion as we had last time, is that the Flowbird architecture is, is really flexible. I mean, it's really easy to, uh, we showed it now, you know, with Spring Cloud, with Micronauts, and now with Spring Foo. Uh, it's really easy to, to just add or to just incorporate Flowbull's engines into just about anything uh, from the Java space. And that's very cool, I think. And uh, it also shows that with the Graal stuff that's going on right now, that there is yeah, a lot of potential for, for really cool stuff in the future. Um, yeah, this was all I had to talk about. I don't know if you want to add something more to this, Philip. No, I mean I think it's it's good to see that uh, we are that we can make this work with different technologies that yeah. we're doing yeah. some good exactly. things with so our know. architects. Yeah, very proud of this. Anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to share. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, yeah, talk to you next time. Bye bye. Bye.